Welcome back to your Healing Buddy podcast with your host, Adina Godet. I am a licensed psychotherapist who enjoys having conversations all about the different areas of mental health. I pray that from every episode, someone takes at least one nugget and is able to apply it to their personal life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy. Welcome back to your Healing Buddy podcast featuring me, your host, Adina Godet. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you can be notified of any weekly episodes that come out. I'm going to get right into it, okay? From the title, you can tell the topic is going to be about holding grudges and learning forgiveness. So forgiveness has been a common theme lately when it comes to certain conversations. And I've even had a situation, a personal situation that happened this week. Um, where someone, a woman from the past came back and discussed forgiveness with me. And it brought up things that have been reoccurring over the past couple of months when it comes to my clients, when it comes to family members, when it comes to friendships. A lot of the theme has been forgiveness. And so... I wanted to make sure that I come and talk about it because it has been a thing that people have been asking about and discussing. And a lot of people don't really understand the vital part that forgiveness plays in our lives. So yes, we're going to jump right into holding grudges and forgiveness and why it's important to forgive. So when somebody has done you wrong or you perceive that they have done something wrong to you, it can be really hard to forgive them, right? And one thing that I always say is that you have to forgive others, not necessarily because they deserve it, but because you deserve freedom and peace, right? When you don't forgive people, your life is the one that is affected. And obviously from the situation that has been done to you or whatever hurt that you're feeling, that's already affecting you, right? It's already giving you um, negative emotions that you can't seem to get over, but also those negative emotions, the anger, the resentment, the bitterness that you are holding on to is affecting your life. It's affecting your happiness. It's affecting you finding peace. You're always thinking and constantly ruminating about that situation or that person that any time that they pop up or any time that you're triggered, it sets you back and you're constantly not moving forward with your life. You know, a lot of people... They even are not focused and not redirecting themselves for their regular goals, you know, that they have because they can't seem to focus on what they have to do because they're so hurt about a situation. And I know we we know people and you might be the person who holds grudges for so long and it could be a week, it could be a year, a month. Actually, I know people who have held grudges for decades you know, for so long. And that is a long time to not forgive somebody. And you're the one walking around angry (laughs) and bitter and resentful. And then any single time you do see them, if you ever do, you see the person or again, that situation comes up, you're upset with them. You're getting angry with them. Um, And that situation happened so long ago, right? Um, So yes, definitely forgiveness is vital and crucial to our lives because we need it to actually move forward. Even spiritually, you know, God tells us that he forgives us every day. (laughs) Imagine you having to forgive somebody every day and God does that every day for us. And he's saying you can't even forgive somebody for something that they've done. Now, let me pause right there because a lot of people cannot separate forgiveness with reconciliation, right? Or having to have them in your life or condoning it or feeling like you're enabling what happened or feeling like, okay, if I forgive, that means that I agree with what they did. Some people can't separate that. Those are two different things. Forgiveness is one separate thing other than reconciliation or even um, forgetting the situation, right? Now, forgiveness comes more from you being able to accept what happened and accept that the past happened. That situation happened to me. I was hurt from that situation, but I'm forgiving and I'm moving forward for me internally, 
right? Now, reconciliation, that's a whole... <laughs> That's a whole other situation that you can decide if you want to continue um, setting boundaries with that person and keeping them in your life or if you don't want to. Again, that is separate. And also forgetting, no, you're not going to forget the situation. Now, it may come a point in time where as time goes by, that situation isn't as relevant to your everyday life like currently. So, of course, Yes, it might be a point where you're not thinking about it every day, which is the goal. You do, you should not be thinking about it every day. We don't want that to be a thing that is affecting you all the time every day, right? However, it is still separate. Forgiving and forgetting is still separate. So yes, I think a lot of people assume that, oh, if I let this go, then I'm giving this person a pass. And it's not necessarily that forgiveness is for you. It really is an internal thing to help you to reframe and kind of change your negative emotions to more of a not necessarily positive emotion but a content emotion again that i don't have to allow this situation or this person to affect my everyday life so i did want to separate the difference because a lot of people get that confused and that's why they feel as if they are not able to forgive and another thing is I always have to ask people when it does come to a point where they are struggling with forgiving is to ask, what does forgiveness actually mean to you? Like separate, like take away the situation, take away the person. Don't think about them in the moment. What does the word forgiveness actually mean to you? And what is the benefit that you can see that forgiveness can give to you in your life? Again, separate situation in general. What does forgiveness mean and how will it affect your life? What are the benefits of forgiveness? And usually when people think about it that way, they're able to, again, think generally and not necessarily have that bias of what they are currently upset about, angry about, resentful about, and bitter about. So that is another thing that you can do to kind of reframe how you want to forgive and how you're going to move forward with forgiving. I know that on one of the previous episodes, one of the recent episodes of the podcast, I did mention with my guest at the time, we were talking about how also being angry at someone and not forgiving them for whatever it is, it's almost like drinking poison, right? You drinking the poison and then expecting the other person to die. It's not going to happen like that. And even if that person is very... um feeling guilty about what they did, or even if they're not, regardless, it is for you to move forward and to live life and to be happy. And you can't really do that when you are holding, again, a lot of negative emotions in in your body and in your mind, and it's going to affect your mental health. It's affecting your everyday life. It's affecting your everyday functioning. And a lot of people also think, well, it's in the past. It is what it is. It's not affecting me now. But if it is affecting your everyday life, if it's affecting your behaviors, if it's affecting how you respond to people, if it's affecting your relationships, your next relationships, because you're continuing to hold what someone else did to you onto other people, then it is still affecting you. It's not the past is not necessarily the past. It is actually the present if it is still affecting you to this day, you know, and so that is why we do have to go back and make sure we're processing our emotions on certain things and being able to change them. And a lot of people feel like their emotion at the time is how they're always gonna feel, right? If you allow yourself to continue feeling that emotion, then yes, that is how you will always feel. That is always how you're gonna respond. That is always um, how you're always gonna be hurt about the situation. And so emotions fluctuate all the time. And sometimes we can help ourselves by pushing ourselves to process them to help them fluctuate and to help it change. Emotions are going to change. You could feel a certain way about a situation today and feel a different way tomorrow and feel a different way next week or feel a different way next month, you know. But sometimes it does take a little bit more effort and work when it comes to a situation where you really felt like somebody did you a certain way, did you wrong, um, didn't meet your expectations, um, they crossed your boundary they just disappointed you, right? Um, Whatever it is, whatever the situation. So yes, I understand it can be difficult, but it is not impossible to look a certain way about a situation or even accepting 
a situation. The only way you're going to have acceptance about a situation that really hurts you is if you can find the benefit that that suffering did to you, right? And of course, what I mean by that is if you look at a situation and you're always the victim, if you, and I'm not saying don't be because obviously the situation happened to you, but if you never can look at the situation in a different way, or look at it and say, okay, what is it that I can learn from this situation? What is the lesson from this? Or um, what can I do differently next time that I can take accountability for in this in this part of it? If you never can see the benefit of your suffering of that situation, you will always be a victim and you will never get over it. And again, it's going to always affect you because <laughs> you're going to look at other people differently. You're going to treat people differently. You're going to treat your relationships, all your relationships the same, whether it's a friend, a family member, your job, even your coworkers. You're always going to look at that and let it affect you. And you're never going to live a full life. So making sure that we are not messing ourselves up and also self-sabotaging certain things because again that's what unforgiveness can do to you as well a lot of people don't forgive also because they secretly and i'm not going to necessarily say secretly because some people some people openly say this but if they don't feel that validation from the person or if the other person does not see their perspective or if the person hurt them and again they didn't say sorry. They didn't take accountability. Um, a lot of people are looking for the person that healed them, that hurt them, right? And it's in a lot of situations, sometimes you can receive um, reassurance and validation and be able to move forward, right? But let's be honest, a lot of times you're not going to always get that courtesy. Um, what if somebody cut you off, right? Say something happened, um, to you, they did something and then they ghosted you, they cut you off or even say the person has passed away. The person is dead, right? How are you going to get through that? You are not going to be able to receive an apology. You're never going to be able to receive an apology. You're never going to be able to hear, um, them say, oh, I'm sorry for this. So when moving forward and forgiveness, from a person or a situation that you're not going to receive that validation from, that you're not going to receive that accountability from, yes, it's a little bit more difficult. But again, that is why we say, regardless if that person is here alive and well, or if it's a person that is um, passed away, that's why forgiveness is internal and it is for you. And you have to learn how to forgive. Again, forgiving and forgetting and reconciliation are three different things. Remember, yes, they can all be in the same theme and all be in the same uh, process, but they are different things. And so learning how to forgive is the internal part of what you have to do to move forward. And talking about forgiveness as well, we also have to mention that a lot of people do not know how to forgive themselves and they do not practice self-forgiveness as well. A lot of people don't show themselves self-compassion. So it is very difficult for them to forgive themselves or forgive others because they have not practiced it with themselves, right? And so when it comes to self-forgiveness, a lot of the times we were not taught that, oh, when you make a mistake, you know, just forgive yourself and move on. A lot of things we were taught is that, okay, you made a mistake and you're bad for this. And now you feel, what's the word? You feel shame, you feel guilty for doing things and you didn't learn how to, again, process your emotions on the situation. Cause it's okay to feel hurt and it's okay to feel like okay I messed up however if you stay there again it's going to affect you later on it's going to affect your choices it's going to affect your perspective it's going to affect how you interact with people or interact with the world and so you still do have to learn how to forgive yourself when you have messed up and understand one you are human okay and you're going to feel every single emotion so it's okay to feel hurt it's okay to feel like dang like I didn't do this correctly but what we should never do is talk down on ourselves. What we should never do is have negative self-talk. Now, we're human. It's going to happen. But we should always make sure that we are catching it. We should always make sure that we are reframing it and identifying what we are actually saying to ourselves. And also identifying why we feel that way in the first place. And sometimes we do need to go back, right? A lot of stuff when it comes to forgiveness as well is because there's a lot of inner child things that are reflecting in the current, right? So if somebody did something to you or you messed up, usually 
it's not the first time that that has happened to you. Somebody in your past has done that to you. And now it is bringing up a feeling of, oh my gosh, deja vu. It's feeling, it's a feeling of I've been here before and now my body is feeling the same emotion because your body keeps score of everything that happens to it. Now we might not always remember (laughs) cognitively, right? We might not always remember what happens to us, but our bodies will remember any emotion that it feels and it tries to connect it, the situations, even if they're not connected. So a lot of the times we are dealing with inner child situations currently that we did not process then correctly or in a healthy way. And now we are exhibiting the same behaviors, the same emotions and the same feelings, right? And again, it's okay to feel that way, but we have to be cognizant. We have to identify what is triggering us so we can move forward and not hold on to it. And we can say, okay, I'm going to move forward with this. I'm going to let this go. This did hurt me. How can I move forward? This did hurt me. But what other emotion came with this? This did hurt me, but what can I do differently next time? So making sure to be cognizant of that too when you're thinking about your inner child and what is actually occurring right now. And ask yourself, is this, am I triggered by this because of what's happening in the moment? Or am I feeling away because of what happened when I was nine, when I was 15, you know? Okay, so again, we know the importance of forgiveness and why we need to forgive. However, sometimes we don't know where to start when it comes to forgiving, again, whether it's ourselves or other people. So one of the first things I always say is to recall and visualize, right? And so what that means is reflect on the situation, whether it's writing it out or saying it out loud, right? And sometimes you need to keep repeating the situation. And what I mean by that is not doing it in a way that's like, okay, I'm still angry. I'm still mad. Recall this, say the situation or write it out. Then the next day, write it out again. Then the next day, write the situation out again, right? Without looking back at the previous written description that you wrote the day before. Sooner or later, you're going to start changing your language about it. Again, you'll go from the victim mindset again, and that's okay. When the situation happens, you're, you're going to feel all these negative emotions. But again, emotions fluctuate. So, From the first letter that you write to probably maybe the 15th letter that you write is going to look different. When you put all of them side by side and have them out together as you're reading it, your language is going to change. You're not going to feel exactly the same exact way because, again, you're being intentional about saying, okay, how am I viewing this situation? So your view of the situation could change when it comes to that. So making sure you recall the situation and visualize the event and write it out and make sure you're changing your language and how you're viewing the situation. So that could be one. And also, you can empathize with the situation without minimizing how it actually did affect you, right? So basically, try to understand, again, the motives of maybe the person, why that person may have done that. Because a lot of the times, too, we're coming from a perspective of us and our experiences. The only way that we have experiences and our perspectives is what we've been through, right? And we have to remember that everybody has not been through the same things that you have been through. So a lot of times when we're hurt, we're saying, oh, you should have known better or you shouldn't have did this. And of course, with more bigger situations that um, can universally be bad, yes, we can understand like, okay, yes, you should have known better, right? But with a lot of these little situations, A lot of times we're triggered because of something that happened to us, but the other person doesn't understand that because they didn't feel that or that's not their experience or they never had to deal with something like that. So something they have done may not have been intentional, right? And so sometimes that can help us to get through and to be able to forgive a little bit quicker because we can empathize with them again without minimizing that it hurt us because it still hurts you. So again, it's still something that may need to be changed, but we can emphasize it and say, or empathize with them and say, okay, maybe they really didn't intend for that to happen in that way, right? So that is another thing. Um, we can look at it, forgiveness, as a gift, right? Um, a gift for us. So again, when we forgive and we're able to accept and move forward, we're giving ourselves some peace and happiness, right? And about whether it's a situation, again, to be content with the situation in general, to understand and accept that, yep, it happened. It can't change. However, 
I'm going to see the lesson in this, right? And so when we move forward, we're giving ourselves a gift of peace, right? So sometimes even looking at forgiveness as an actual tangible gift that we're giving ourselves. So that's another thing. Um, Also, forgiveness is something you actually have to continue to commit to, right? Just like with grief, when we talk about grief, it is not linear. Like if you physically lose a person and they pass away, somebody that was really close to you, it's going to be hard to get through that and get past that and kind of deal with the sad emotions, the depressive emotions and all the negative emotions that you feel when it comes to grieving, right? Um, So when you're doing that, it's not linear. So you could be great one day, you could be really sad another day you could be minimally sad (laughs) the next week um but then the next week after that the next year you're okay you know so it it can be not a straightforward line it's not linear it's the same thing with forgiveness so again with certain situations you can be able to move forward with it quicker right it might have been something small like okay it hurt me or i felt away i move forward right but with certain situations that may be bigger It's not linear. You have to, you really have to commit to say, I'm, I am forgiving. And so with that, it's okay to say, "Mm, okay, this thing did trigger me. I might still feel a way here, but in this part of it, I may learn how to deal with my triggers and learn how to cope when it comes to if this pops up again, or if this is said, if these words are said and I was triggered by the words, how am I going to move forward in this moment? Am I going to distract myself? Am I going to um, go decompress? Am I going to ground myself and use anxiety techniques? Things like that. So making sure that you are constantly committed to forgiving, that will definitely help as well. And again, just holding on and understanding and knowing that, look, again, life is a journey. And one of the biggest things that we have to learn and practice is forgiveness. Because again, People can even hurt you unintentionally. That is something we always have to do is to learn how to forgive. Again, with bigger situations and also with smaller situations. So again, I hope some of these tips have helped you to re just reevaluate what's going on in your life and certain things that you know you need to forgive and also identifying your emotions and making sure that you are able to you know, change it and able to process it and able to cope with your emotions. We want to forgive so we can live fulfilling and happy lives, okay? So we're doing this together. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I hope you learned something. I hope that you can comment and let me know how you felt about it or certain situations that you had to forgive. Let's have the conversation. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you tune in next week. Bye.